Hello everyone, and thank you for watching this video. Today we're going to talk about 2D convolutions, and we're going to understand them by uh, learning about the PyTorch uh, well, co 2D convolution module. Specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking a look at a simple example, and then we'll try to kind of expand this uh, example and talk about the PyTorch module and understand all of its input parameters. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at this example. What we have over here is an input sample, which is supposed to depict an, well, an image, only it's much smaller than what an image would actually be. And it's a five by five matrix where, oh, well, each pixel over here is supposed to have a value and that's how the image is created but we, we really don't care about the values we just want to understand how the convolution is applied to apply the convolution we need something that is called a kernel and over here in this example we have a kernel which is a three by three matrix uh, by applying this kernel onto the input sample we'll see in a moment we get an output matrix which is also in this case a three by three so when we start applying the kernel matrix onto the input sample, it's applied first to the top left corner like this. And what happens is that, well, the kernel has certain weights for each pixel corresponding to a different uh, weight. And these weights are learned as part of the convolutional neural net network training. So each weight is multiplied by the image uh, pixel. And then after, after that, everything is added together and that's how the output matrix value is computed. And sometimes a bias is also added. To compute the next uh, pixel in the output matrix, the kernel is simply shifted, slided, strided to the right like this. And that's how the next value is computed and so on and so on. When we finish with the first row, the kernel is set back to where it began and strided down one uh, um, pixel and so on and so on. So that's generally how a convolution is applied. Next, let's talk about the um, PyTorch uh, convolution module, 2D convolution module. I assume that some of you have already uh, seen a similar tutorial like the one I saw in the previous I, I showed in the previous uh, uh, slide and well I found myself sometimes having trouble uh, while understanding what convolutions are on one hand still having difficulties uh, using this module and that's why I decided to make this video to kind of make uh, these input parameters a bit clearer okay so let's start by talking about what the input and output channels are. In the initial example that we just saw, we only had one input channel and one output channel. If we have a color image, then, well, automatically we have three input channels, one for uh, blue, red, and green. And let's say we defined a layer where we have, again, three input channels because that's how our image is, and we want two output channels. When we define three input and two output channels, the layer looks like this. There are two uh, sets of three kernels. Each set is referred to as a filter. And for each uh, filter, each corresponding uh, kernel is applied to its channel. And then at the end, everything is added up again, and that's how the pixel value is calculated again. And same thing, same thing goes to, uh, to the next filter. The next parameter is the kernel size, and we've actually already seen that, okay? We uh, decided that the kernel is a three by three, it doesn't, well, the dimensions don't have to be equal one to another. It could be a two by one or, a, I don't know, a five by eight or whatever you want it to be, as long as it's smaller than the input sample. 
And of course, it's also important to understand that the larger the kernel is, the smaller the output matrix is because, well, that's, that means that there are fewer uh, shifts that you can make with the kernel. The next parameter is stride, and that defines how the kernel moves. Okay, what we saw in the initial example, again, is that when we moved the kernel for each corresponding uh, pixel for the output, the centerpiece of the uh, kernel shifted by one. That is a stride of one. Okay, if we set stride equal to two, then first of all, that that decreases the output shape. Now it's a two by two matrix. And that happens because, well, there are fewer shifts that the kernel makes. Okay, for a stride of two, the kernel moves like this. And well, it's also important to understand that when you set it to two, it's, it's relevant to the horizontal movement and to the vertical movement of the, um, of the kernel. So that is the stride. Next, we will talk about uh, padding, okay? And while talking about padding, we will also talk about the padding mode, which is by default equal to zero. So again, moving back to our initial example, um, let's say we want to maintain the size of the input sample. We want it to be uh, size five by five, and we also want to maintain the kernel size of three by three. Of course, that can happen because we saw how we apply the convolutions in the previous slides. And in order to achieve that, what you can do is to add padding to the output, to the edges of your input sample. Okay, By setting padding equal to 1, this happens. Okay, What happens is that there is an extra pixel added to the edge of your sample. And well, that way now the kernel has more space where it can move and well, the resulting seven by seven matrix, which a three by three kernel is applied to it is a five by five matrix. Uh, there is an open question of, well, we've just created new pixel values. What do we fill inside them? And that's where the padding mode is. Um, well, if you set it to zero, which is default and that's what, well, usually happens, then it's set to zero, but there are other options. You can take a look at the PyTorch documentations. You can also um, mirror or have a symmetric uh, values. Uh, but again, the most common ones is the zeros. Okay. The next uh, parameter is dilation. Dilation refers to the uh, spacing between the kernel size. Okay, so the default, the default value is one. And well, what we saw in our default example is that when the uh, dilation is equal to one, the spacing between the kernel points is simply one. If we change the spacing, the dilation, to be equal to two, then applying the same kernel would, be, would look like this. Okay, now there is a spacing of two between each two uh, kernel points. And that, of course, reduces the shape of the output matrix because there's larger spacing. And well, the, for the next shift for the kernel, the next stride, it would look like this. It just, it, it shifts by one to the right. Everything shifts by one to the right. Okay, the next uh, parameter is groups. And we've actually already seen an example of group equal to one. In this example over here, we have well, one group of three input channels. And what happens is that there is a, a different kernel for each one of the channels. But sometimes when you have different, um, um, a different number of input channels and output channels, you want to apply different filters to different groups of the input and output channels. And if what I've said now is kind of well, confusing. I hope it will be more understandable after the next um, example. So let's take a look at this example. Right now we have uh, eight input channels and four output channels. 
And let's say we set our groups parameter equals to four. So again, eight input samples and four uh, output, uh, I'm sorry, channels, not samples. And well, we set groups equal to four, and that means that we have four groups, from each group comprised of two different uh, samples in uh, our input uh, sample. And well, for each one of the groups, we now have a corresponding filter, or each filter is uh, comprised of two different uh, kernels. And these two kernels together, well, the filter computes the corresponding output channel. And that is how groups work. Usually this parameter is played with when the channels have distinct properties and therefore there are different filters needed to learn these properties. Um, it's also important to know that the, the group parameter, that number has to be divisible by both um, the input channels and the output channel. So um, that's something that has to be taken into consideration. Uh, the next parameter is bias, and it's again usually uh, by default set to true. That means that after applying the kernel onto the input sample, at the end of the computation, you simply add a bias, which is also a learned parameter along with the kernel weights. Um, the last two parameters um, are the device, if you're using CPU or GPU, and of course the uh, data type. That you are processing. Um, the last thing I would like to talk about is the output dimensions. And if you take a look at the documentations in PyTorch, then you can see that for a given input, okay, it could be a single input uh, or uh, well, a batch containing several uh, instances. And for each input, we have the number of input channels, the height and the width of the input and the corresponding output of course it could be again uh, a single uh, a sample or several samples there are actually formulas that compute the height and width of the output shapes and this is uh, something that could be useful if you have a desired shape that you would like your model to output okay and you can see that the output depends on the well padding relation kernel size and stride everything we'll see we have seen uh, that has to do with defining the convolution layer so thank you for watching this video i hope it was helpful let me know in the comments below and also let me know if you'd like me to make a video on well anything else